so I finally wrapped up our troubleshooting of a Honda CR250 on a CRG chassis. So the customer dropped it off. Uh, originally when it showed up, you like my daughter's bike in the background? It originally showed up with a butterfly shifter or hand, um, hand shifting setup. And so we got rid of that. That's in the box. The customer wanted a bump shifter. So then the first thought that crossed my mind is, oh, great, where am I going to find the J-arm and all that stuff to work for it? And um, luckily, I actually had pretty much everything uh, to make the, ha the project happen. So again, 2001 Honda CR250 mounted to an older CRG chassis. And we did the bump shift conversion so back to what it was intended for so that was nice the tabs were already there uh, the biggest thing was just making sure I had the right bump shifter to fit the spacing and the steering wheel uh, gap and all that fun stuff uh, I utilized his clutch lever so we that's the one that came in on the cart as you can see the steering wheel is not period correct but who cares so the other thing that this engine would do and I posted a couple of shorts on this channel at around 6,000 RPM, it would rev really well. It would hit about 6,000 RPM. And it would just flatline. It wouldn't miss. It wouldn't pop. It didn't sputter. It would just rev like, and then, bop. And I was thinking, okay, well, we'll mess with the jetting. We'll start there. Because a lot of times on these CR250s and the 125s, if they're carbureted incorrectly or you're way out of line, they just don't run. It's going to hit a rev limiter. They don't want to run. They'll hiss. They'll pop. So I think, oh, we'll do that. And then the customer's like, no, we've already changed carburetors and done this and done that. All of a sudden, it just didn't run properly. So I looked at the whole fuel system. Um, it had the, you know, the typical Makuni round pump on it. Um, but they're like 35 bucks. So instead of sitting there trying to rebuild it and charging a guy a bunch of labor to rebuild a $35 pump, I just uh, swapped it out for the Delardo pump. Uh, the Delardo, the nice thing about the Delardos, it has a little check valve in it. Because uh, as some of you may or may not know, these key and carburetors are not designed for go-karts. They're designed for motorcycles that are gravity fed. So the fuel inlet is much larger on a gravity feed carburetor than a fuel pump supplied carburetor. And on these particular carburetors, you're not changing it without modification. It's not like a Delardo where you can change a different needle and seats. So um, instead of trying to mess with the Makunis that I'm not very familiar with on the 125s or the 250s, on the 80, I'm very familiar with it. On the 125s and 250s, not really. Um, and then even online, I know, I'm that guy. I went online. I read a bunch of Thumper Talk forums and all this other motocross stuff and 80% of the guys said, get rid of the Makunis, go with the PWK. So that's what I did. Uh, but that's at the end of the project. So I started pulling everything apart. As you'll see, this has a modified motocross pipe. Now there is a very nice pipe available out there for the um, CR250 built by RLV. I'm actually a dealer for RLV. Um, but that was not within our budget at this time. That's going to be a necessary upgrade in the future because as you can see, it's cracked um, multiple times in the typical spot. So um, it's not supported properly, so it's cracking. So I told the customers, like, hey, it's going to break. Um, you can weld. You might as well just keep an eye on it. That's the cheap way. But the best way would be going with the RLV uh, 250 pipe. So we're, we're already prepping for that. So I'm starting to pull this thing apart, and the first thing I run into is a reed cage. Uh, the reeds were actually okay, but you're going to see there's damage on the reed cage there on that left port. You see the damage. Honestly, it's going to work, but when you're troubleshooting stuff, you don't want to know in your head that, oh, that part was not good, and you replaced it, or you didn't replace it, and then at the end of the project, you end up replacing it anyway. You know, again, I don't want to run the bill up on these customers on labor. I don't want to not swap stuff out when I see it. Um, oh, big thank you to Swede Tech Racing Engines. So, Swede Tech. Swede Tech Racing Engines. I worked there for a number of years, and Rainey was a great help on the phone with a couple of little things that I'll get into here in a little bit. But um, 
I was able to source a Honda CR250 reed cage from Swede Tech. So I was able to come up with a, basically, is brand new, is just missing the reed stops. So I took my customer's reed stops, put them on the reed cage, boom, we're good. So the reeds, but I kind of knew that wasn't going to be the issue. Then looking inside the cylinder, it looks like they had the power valves locked open. So whoever did that actually seemed like it was a nice job. So not a big issue there. Piston, cylinder, didn't have any damage, no debris. Um, the spark plug looked good. It looked rich, but that was about it. So we were good there. Nothing major. And um, so I went to go pull the engine off to install a new clutch cable. Again, got this clutch cable from Sweet Tech. There's your plug, Rainy. No, I did not put a Sweet Tech sticker on the cart. So there's a clutch cable I got from Sweet Tech, and the customer had a flywheel cover mounted. So the flywheel cover was mounted. I had to pull the engine off to get to the clutch. No big deal. Pull the engine, remove the cover. Lo and behold, I see the flywheel. So, something had gone between the case and the flywheel and the pickup. Now, I'm sitting there thinking, I reached out to a couple of different ignition companies. If you're out there, Mike Speed, if you can help me with these Denso flywheels from an educational standpoint, from my understanding via Swede Tech, the leading edge is the important edge. You don't want your leading edge rubbed off. I'm sorry, trailing edge. The trailing edge. You don't want the trailing edge rubbed off. So on this one, the trailing edge is okay. But again, I'm already in there. I went through a bunch of the flywheels I have. I found a Honda CR125 flywheel that was an exact match with the exception of the keyway location. So I'm thinking to myself, everything else measures out perfect. The tab, guessing what this length should have been versus the CR125 flywheel, they weighed the same. The markings were a little bit different, but the rivets and everything were the same. The thickness was the same. Everything was the same on this thing, um, except for the timing marks. And the one I had was brand new. This one was ground down. So I called Rainey, said, hey, this is what I'm going to try to do. And he goes, I don't know if that's really going to be your issue. It might be. But he walked me through the process of how to kind of do it without a timing light. Because as you can see, the seat's installed. I can't fire this thing up on the stand by myself because it's a CR250. Um, the compression, the first time we tried to bump start it, uh, my wife almost flew over the back of me. And if you're wondering why I had my wife pushing, is that she's not comfortable driving the carts. Otherwise, I would have had her driving the cart and I would have flown over the handlebars. But nonetheless, so I said, you know what? Forget it. She's too valuable to get hurt. I told her, go grab the car keys. I hooked up a tow rope to her car. And these are available for sale. I use these for um, starting the carts. I wrap them around the tire. These are my pull straps. It has a handle and everything. Go to extracartparts.com. You can buy this. But um, I, I rigged this up to her Mazda. She pulled me down the street, and after about 30 feet, the engine fired right off. And that's how I know it runs to 6,000 RPM and just goes blah. Thanks to our old school Micron 2. So that's what led us down this path. And again, so back to the flywheel. Again, this is the original flywheel, a bunch of damage. The leading edge, completely ground down, non-existent. Trailing edge. It's kind of a sharp edge, but I'm already in there. It's like, okay. So again, I modified everything to put a CR125 flywheel on and got that working. And then I was curious about the pickup. So here's the pickup. You can see there's debris on it. I'm going to try to get that angle. You can see the black rub marks on there. So there was definitely contact between this pickup and that flywheel. I don't know much about these ignition systems, uh, so I pulled it apart. So there's a magnet in there. Underneath the magnet, there's a, a flat little plate, and that flat little plate goes between the magnet and the pickup here. 
Well, I was unable to pop this magnet out. Uh, I took a couple of others, pulled them apart, and the magnet actually fell out right in my hand on the other ones. So I'm thinking to myself, usually a broken magnet's not a good thing. So let's just retrofit this thing. I had a separate pickup. Got everything matched up. It bolted right to the stock CR125. I'm sorry, CR250. It bolted to the CR250 stator plate. Um, I double checked all the measurements. And everything was good. So now we had a flywheel where the key does not align, but we have a tapered crank. So I measured everything up to make sure. I measured, I put this back on. I installed this. I measured it versus the old one before I cut it apart, measured it, then pulled everything apart, replaced this pickup, put the uh, stator plate and the pickup back on the engine, on the case, and that's underneath the fly cover here. Took my 125 flywheel, copied the measurements that I was getting with this flywheel, the damaged one in, this, in the pickup, put everything back together, and yeah, crossing my fingers again, when you don't know how something operates, you probably really shouldn't do stuff like this, but I figured, okay, worst case scenario, it's going to pop hiss is not going to run very good. I'll know exactly what I did wrong. It's like, I tried working on it. And so I pulled it apart. Uh, I would have just had to pull it apart again and then go online and buy new parts. And again, I was trying to save the customer some money because a lot of these parts are outdated. I don't like buying unproven used ignition parts. You just never know what you're going to get. Um, I sell on eBay all the time, but, but I understand buying electronics on eBay is just a high risk. Um, so got all that together. Got the engine on, got the bump shift on, got the bump shift arm back to the J arm. Right about there. Yep. Yep, and before someone call, comments, yes, that is correct. Um, the the customer's a welder, so they're, they're well aware of that. So the J-arm there, got everything mocked up. Got the air filter on, carburetor. I installed the um, CR250 coil mount from Swede Tech. Installed the Delardo fuel pump on the OEM Honda exhaust bracket, so it's rubberized. And with these Delardo pumps you need to make sure they're, they're, there's a good mount. If you try to rigid mount them off of one tab, the tab will break off. So it needs to be either isolated or utilize both mounting holes. So I opted for that. Um, I had actually a little bracket that kept the CDI away from the pipe, away from the water, away from the shift arm. Um, so I had the little CDI mounted there, routed up and around. So it's semi-clean installation. Got everything back together. And today, my buddy Walter came over around lunchtime. He gave me a hand. He push started me. This thing fired up in about two feet. Uh, it's running a little bit rich. So I have the PWK 38 millimeter carburetor on. Current jetting right now on the main jet is a 180. Pilot is a 55. Again, the Delardo directly plumbed right to the carb. Um, so 180, 55, uh, and I'm currently running a DGH needle um, from the karting world. Uh, we're happy with the D series, uh, so I'm running a DGH needle because I didn't know how rich I'd have to go. I don't. I'd rather have the engine running rich than lean. Um, and then the gas tank we have uh, VPC12 uh, mixed with uh, Motul uh, Kart Grand Prix oil. So. Uh, in the end, the engine was used, so the piston was used, so there was no break-in process or anything else, just warm it up. Uh, so that's what I did there on the carburetor, and it fired up like in two feet. I probably could have push-started it myself and hopped in, but I didn't want to look like an idiot in front of the shop and try to push-start it and then fall over the front wheel and have everyone laugh, and then I go on TikTok. But actually, that probably would have been a good idea, because in reality, that might have been the only way I'd go viral. But I digress. So it fired right up. So I'm really, I'm super stoked. Uh, it ran out to about 11,200 RPM. Um, again, that's, I put a Honda CR125 stator on, not stator, flywheel. Um, 
I used a Honda CR125 pickup. After I pulled everything apart, they were identical as far as the measurements on the sizing in the case. Um, that tab there, this was from the 125. So that little bracket was slightly different. When I tried to use that bracket on the 250 cases, I wasn't able to get the necessary air gap between the flywheel and the pickup. So I pulled the new pickup apart and then installed the old bracket. So there we have it. Did I already give Rainy a shout out? Uh, thank you to Sweet Tech Racing Engines. Um, again, they had the parts available that I needed in stock, but then more importantly, he was available for me to call him and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. He goes, you're an idiot. And I go, I know, but no one else likes working on these things. So I got to help this guy get back on track. Let's go. And uh, so thank you, Rainy, for uh, helping me out here at extracartparts.com. And that is our project, and that's the walkthrough process. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Um, I honestly, um, the engine showed up with the TMX carburetor, the Makuni TMX 38 millimeter. I had high hopes for this because I have a, a buddy of mine in the road racing world, Mark Morrison, has experience with Makunis. Um, so I thought I was going to be able to get some baseline jetting from him. But after reading a lot of stuff online and being more familiar with the Kian product, I opted, okay, let's go with the uh, PWK. Um, so that still might be a viable carburetor. I, I really think between the flywheel and the pickup, that was the problem. Because the old pickup, um, this is the old pickup. And as you can see, the magnet is broken. And yesterday, watch, it's going to pop out now. But yesterday, bear with me for a second. You like my pile of tools? I, get, I need to clean them before they go back in the toolbox. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, whoever built this cart, it's not the customer. He bought it secondhand. They decided to use a combination of American and metric and... Kind of a lot of homemade stuff on it. I mean, look at this butterfly shifter. I mean, it's creative. It worked. Um, the customer just wasn't fond of it. So, um, I mean, I do like That's one thing I like about karting. There is a lot of ingenuity, especially for the guys that don't race because they, they're not confined to rule books and certain things like that. So they can kind of um, allow the creativity go. It worked. Um, it was backwards. I mean, it was at least from what I'm used to. Um, but yeah, the customer wanted a bump shift. What else was there that we troubleshot? Oh, we put a new, uh, coil wire, new plug cap, new ground wire. Um, again, the Swede tech coil mount, we did that. Um, new Delardo fuel pump, used carburetor. Uh, again, the jetting that I did Honda CR 250. Uh, I put the 180 main jet and I put a 55 pilot and a DGH needle in it as a starting point, uh, two positions from the top. So that was it. And yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Once I get a little bit more organized, there you go. Um, my plan is to do the videos as the carts come in and videos as they leave. So just more as a kind of a customer record um, and we'll go from there. But, uh, oh, I also pressure checked the engine. That was the other thing. So, that was the other thing. Because when you're running too rich or too lean, it can be an issue. If you have an air leak, which every time you go online, the very first thing people say, oh, you have an air leak. You have an air leak. Um, from my experience, I very rarely do I ever run into seals that are bad. However, I, I did work at Sweet Tech for a number of years. Um, so, you know, Rainey and, and Vince, they're very picky over there. So if anything was questionable, they're replacing it anyway. But <coughs> I can only think of two times I ever had a troubleshoot an air leak on, on a Sweet Tech engine. But I had, a, I had everything apart anyway. The um, side cover was off and for the ignition. Oh, when that's what it was. When I pulled the stator... Uh, behind there, there was a seal, and there was that famous orange RTV sealant. So I'm all, ah, shit, that's going to be a problem. But um, so I pressure checked everything, and it held. 
Uh, so we had really good pressure, holding pressure, so that was good. And I also pulled a vacuum on it, and uh, we held a vacuum with intolerance. So all of that was actually pretty good. But those are the plugs, uh, one for the cylinder, one for the intake. Leave the spark plug in, and then you do the pressure check through the pulse line fitting in the um, reed cage area on the engine side, piston side of the engine, not on the opposite side. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Give me your feedback. Again, in the future, I'll make sure the videos are much shorter, and I'll also make sure that um, they're uh, videos in and videos out. Tune in, and thanks again, and uh, just remember, extra cart parts.